one of the defining features of the chordates is a set of pharyngeal arches where in fish internal gills uh, for respiration can occur. These are even present in the embryos of land vertebrates like this chicken. As you can observe here in the lamprey and in the shark, cartilage bars support these pharyngeal arches where the internal gills are located in fish. As you can observe here in these tadpoles which have recently hatched from eggs, external gills are possible as well. External gills are known shortly after hatching in uh, frog tadpoles, in the larvae of Sicilians, that's a group of amphibians, and also in the larvae of lungfish. These are fish very closely related to amphibians. Perhaps they are best known in salamanders, where they can be present in larval salamanders throughout their larval period instead of just a short time after hatching, as is true in frogs. And there are even some salamanders, like the axolotl uh, here, which can retain them as adults. These are larvae axolotls, uh, which have external gills as larvae, as many salamanders do, but the adults will actually uh, retain uh, these uh, because they are aquatic and retain some juvenile traits. These external gills may possess muscles which allow them to move, which can be an advantage in stagnant water, and you can observe the very rich blood flow to these external gills. Uh, deoxygenated blood is sent to the gills and then as uh, these filaments uh, allow the gases to be exchanged with the surrounding water. Oxygen from the water enters the gills and will be sent to the heart of the salamander to pump throughout the body. And carbon dioxide, which has built up in the blood, can then be exchanged with the water. And so here you can see the very rich blood supply that salamanders send to their external gills where they can perform gas exchange and obtain the oxygen which supports their body's metabolic needs.